Hey gang, Evan Sutton here. I'm the senior sound design instructor here at DubSpot in New York City and online. Today we're gonna to be talking about programming in Reactor. We're gonna make ourselves a nice delay effect that you can use within a Reactor Ensemble or within a DAW as a standalone Reactor effect. So let's get it poppin'. So I have my instrument right here. This is a synthesizer that I made. It's called the Narcissynth. It features my face in a number of places. Okay, I've got a step sequencer here, if you want to hear that. It sounds like this. I've made a number of bangers with this that you have perhaps heard around the world. <laughs> at clubs, at all the clubs. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to build a delay instrument. Now remember in Reactor, an ensemble is the whole shebang. That's all of your components opened at once. You can only have one ensemble open at a time. The ensemble is usually built of instruments, okay? An instrument in Reactor, if you recall from other tutorials on YouTube channels such as this one, instruments in Reactor can be a lot of different things. They're mostly just these smaller components that make up an ensemble. Instruments can be things like a synthesizer, such as this one right here. Instruments can also be effects, samplers, things like that. So the first thing I'm going to do for this delay is I'm going to create a new instrument. Okay, and there's some presets for new instruments, and I'm going to go to new effect. The big difference here is that in a new effect, we don't have the audio voice combiners. If you don't know what those are, check out one of my other reactor tutorials. Basically, they mix down a polyphonic signal into a monophonic audio signal that can be exported out of the instrument. Now, this is done before audio leaves the synthesizer instrument, so we don't need it on the effect. If you use it on an audio effect, essentially, you're going to end up with a, a strange sort of compression sound. It's actually kind of interesting, but it's not what we want here. So I'm going to jump on into this new effect, and we have our inputs right here and our outputs here. Okay, remember inputs on the left, outputs on the right in Reactor. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab the built-in module. And we're going to go down to delay and I'm just going to grab the single delay. It's really simple actually. I'm going to go ahead and hook it up in, out. Okay, and then I'll hook up the right actually just to be dry. Okay, I'll right click here to create a control. This is going to set our delay time. Okay, in milliseconds. So I'm going to set this to f around 500 milliseconds. That's about half a second. I don't know if it's the same over there in Europe if you guys use the same. Is, is it different with the metric system? I can't remember. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit a key. You're going to hear a little delay on the left side. Okay, let's get rid of the step sequencer for now. All right, great. So we have a nice little uh, a nice little delay going. This is literally just a delay. A delay in and of itself does not have echoes. We do that. We do those repeating echo effects using a feedback loop and we are going to have to create that here. All right. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete this connection here. And basically what we're going to have to do is do this twice because this is a stereo signal. So we'll start with just the left side and then we'll use all of the same controls here for both delays. So I've got my single delay and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and connect uh, the out to a crossfader. So I'll just go to signal path and we'll grab crossfade. Okay. X is the control signal here that is going to uh, control what we're fading. All right. So we'll move this over here a little bit. All right. That's good. And now I'll go ahead and connect the delay over here. And I'm going to change this crossfade fader uh, to be a knob. I just like that. So I'll just go to style, change it to a knob. Okay. And I'll call this, you guessed it, wet, dry. Okay. And so I'm going to connect the delayed signal here. And I will just go ahead and send the original signal straight through. Okay, so we got that. All right, brilliant. So so that's so that's working pretty well. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to connect the crossfader up over here. Okay. And uh, let's just let's just check our wet dry. It's at half. Okay, so we should be hearing a little bit of the delayed signal as well as the original one. There we go. That's working. Okay, you can see these things lighting up when something actually happens. Now let's turn the delay time down a little bit. 
All right, so that's working pretty well. Now, the second thing that we have to do here is create a feedback loop, okay? The feedback loop is what's going to create those really nice echoes and things. So what we need to do is we actually need to take a signal out of the delay and put it back into the delay, okay? So what we're gonna do here actually is, first of all, we're gonna grab another math friend of ours. This is called multiply add, and it's actually really simple. The first two ports are multiplied together and then added to what's in the third one, okay? So we're gonna just go ahead and, and plug the original signal in here, okay? And then we're gonna plug this in here. Okay, so this is this is the, the, the dry signal going into the delay. We don't want that to be goofed around with, but we're gonna take our output from the single delay and plug it in here, okay? Now, while we're at it, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a knob, panel, knob, and I'll go ahead and just plug that in there. And the knob, I'm gonna change the range to be between zero and one, and this is gonna be our feedback knob, okay? This is our feedback signal going in here, and then it'll be going back to the in port, and our feedback knob is gonna decide how much of that signal we get. So if I turn this all the way down and it's at zero, we're not getting any of this outputted signal going back into the delay, but as I turn this up, we're basically letting certain amounts of that signal in, okay, so let's go ahead and take a listen to what this sounds like. And if we push it hard enough, we can make it blow up. Okay, so that's working pretty well, but the last thing that we're gonna do here is just add a little bit of a safety net for how heavy the delay can get, because it, it can really blow up uh, if we push it hard enough, and you can have all the fun you want with that, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Audio Modifier and add a saturator, and I'm just gonna add the saturator between the output of the delay and its input on are multiply plus, okay? And what this is gonna do is it's gonna act as a sort of a limiter. This saturator is not as useful as an audio effect, but what it does do is it will actually uh, limit a signal to minus two dB, so it can never blow up and get out of control, which I actually really like. So if we turn the feedback up really high, you're not gonna get something that just blows up in your face. Now, this should work great. <laughs> In fact, I, I made this wet dry backwards, so we're, we'll change it to a dry wet. I, I prefer that things are the other way around. There we go. More wet is up. Dry. And there's the wet. So now, we just have to do this stuff a second time for the right side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab the, everything but the knobs, and I'm just gonna option clone them. And now we'll go ahead and just put the right as the input here, okay? We're gonna need to do this. It's very, very simple. We're gonna fake a stereo effect by using actually two mono effects, which is not uncommon. I'm gonna hook up the delay control to the same knob as the left. Same with the feedback knob here and same with the dry wet knob here. So we now have these three knobs, feedback, delay, and dry wet, controlling both channels here. And now I'll just go ahead and hook this back up there. So there we go. Now I'll go ahead and play. Let's see what it sounds like. Woohoo, not too bad, is it? I really enjoy making this effect. Now the last thing that we can do, just to really drive the point home, is save this in its own ensemble. If you go ahead and you take this whole thing, I'm just gonna zoom out here to the structure. Now I'm gonna go ahead and save this as an instrument, okay? These are, these are some of my other instruments here. I have a distortion, a grain delay, a multi-mode filter, and a simple stereo delay. So I can save that in there, and that'll be in my personal library. I'll just write simple delay. 
Okay, but now if I want to change the ensemble and I, I just want to make this thing so it's actually an effect, I can go ahead and I can do this. Okay, 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 okay. and now you can hear my voice going in there. Hey gang, Evan Sutton here. So now, since this is its own little effect, here, I'll just make this a little bit more manageable for you. How's that? You want to listen to the rest of the tutorial like this? So now, what I can do with this effect is actually load it into Reactor Effects, which is within a DAW. I'm going to go ahead, load Reactor Effects as the plugin, and I can load up an effects ensemble such as this one that includes an instrument like this. Just make sure uh, to save it as an ensemble, okay? And then when you find it, you can just go ahead and you can load it up and just use it as a regular audio effect. And you can make all kinds of cool customizable stuff. Uh, that's, that's all kinds of fun. And you can make some really interesting little uh, performance patches. That's what I like to do. You can make these custom things like a grain delay with an LFO that modulates, so on. Stuff like that. It's all kinds of fun. And I hope you really dig in. There's all kinds of wacky stuff that you can do in here to customize. Try putting in a, a filter here and there. You know, that might be fun. You can just add and add and add and just do things that you may have wanted to do with other software but couldn't build. And now you can because it's Reactor. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. This is Evan Sutton. You can catch me online. I'm also known as Astrolith. You can catch me at astrolith.net. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I shall see you next time. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.